Hello everyone, my name is Rosie Helson and I'm Marketing Manager at Natural Capital Partners. I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for joining us today to hear about sourcing renewable energy in Asia and the options available to businesses which are looking to meet renewable energy goals in this region. We have two speakers today, Jared Broslowski is Secretary General for Rex International and works on the consumer driven market for renewable electricity in Europe and around the world. Uh, he's reporting for Utrecht in the Net from Utrecht in the Netherlands today and Jared is a leading expert in the market for guarantees of origin and other electricity tracking instruments and I'm sure many of our listeners are already aware of Jared's work in the industry. Um, recently Jared began the International REC Standard Foundation which implements and standardizes attribute tracking systems around the globe. Second in the lineup today is my colleague Christian Froelich who manages the global markets team here at Natural Capital Partners and is based in our London office. Uh, Christian has more than 20 years experience in the energy and climate change industry. Uh, he, he develops new products, sources high quality environmental instruments, provides insight on global policy developments and builds uh, strong relationships with our supply partners and Christian has been involved in the development of more than 200 uh, renewable energy emission reduction projects uh, particularly in China, Vietnam and India. So this webinar is scheduled to last just 30 minutes and we'll leave about five minutes at the end for questions. You are all muted in listen only mode so please use the panel on the right hand side of the screen to submit any questions and we will go through them at the end. This webinar was set up in follow-up to a white paper we have recently produced on this topic in response to demand from our clients. If you'd like to receive the full 18-page white paper, including a lot more detail than we have time for today, you can contact me. So I'm now very pleased to hand over to Jared, who will give us an overview of the Asian renewable energy market. Thank you, Rosie. Uh, for the introduction. I also think you did fantastically with two very difficult last names, so uh, thank you for that as well. Um, it's always good to start out a presentation with a disclaimer, but I think I do need to start this presentation with two very large disclaimers. Um, and the first is, of course, that uh, there is no single person that is an expert on the developments that are happening in southern and eastern Asia. So this is a huge region, of course. There's a lot of different countries, lots of different developments, lots of different stakeholders and people that are involved to make sure that consumers have a better uh, role in the electricity market in this region. Um, but that does, of course, present the opportunity as well to please reach out to us on this call today, reach out to Rex International members like Natural Capital Partners, and reach out to stakeholders in the region to really try and start to um, better understand really what's happening within this, con within this region. The second is uh, connected to that first disclaimer, and that is my presentation today is only going to be 10 minutes in length. That's not a long time to talk about all the different developments that are happening. So it's just one more reason, again, to really get in contact with stakeholders following this conversation after reading the white paper from Natural Capital Partners and uh, trying to learn more about what's happening here. If you could click the slide. Many of you will be familiar with Rex International. If you're not, I'll provide a little bit of uh, introduction right now. Rex International really was the initiator, the founder in many ways of the uh, Guarantee of Origin system in Europe almost 20 years ago. We did this together with a number of different stakeholders, but it provided us with the unique opportunity to see how attribute tracking systems can develop in many different countries and regions. So primarily at that time, it was of course developments within Europe. One thing that we really noticed in Europe was that there was an important need to provide some level of standardization or harmonization within tracking systems around, around the world and between different countries. It simplifies choice, it simplifies understanding of consumers and producers, it simplifies the, the role of the national governments, and it makes it easier, of course, for us to all help in the development of renewable technologies around the world. So uh, we really started promoting standardization, and from that perspective, we very much promote the Greenhouse Gas Protocol Scope 2 document, guidance document, CDP methodology, RE100 criteria. To, be, uh, to talk about this from a technical perspective, these are types of 
um, attributional accounting mechanisms. This is something that we truly believe in and uh, should be uh, promoted much more. Because what you will see is in the developments in Asia is that while there may be a development to allow more consumer choice in the many different countries and regions on behalf of the national government, they may not always adhere to the principles of the Greenhouse Gas Protocol Guidance Document, CP criteria, or RE100 criteria. And this is something we should really be watching out for. We should really be working to promote the best possible options for consumers, producers, and national governments. And I'll talk about this a little bit more if you click on the slide, because you'll see some developments that are happening within uh, Southern and Eastern Asia. You'll see their uh, green and blue color. This is essentially to represent where there are state-led initiatives uh, for attribute tracking systems or more consumer choice in the electricity market. And where there's a blue represents where there's a voluntary system uh, to kind of implement this choice in the electricity market. And if you click on the next slide, I'll provide a little bit of an overview of what this means. And essentially, if you look at the voluntary market developments or the state-initiated market developments, you're going to see kind of two different types of perspectives here as well. Voluntary market developments are always in discussion with national authorities or at least in discussion with local stakeholders if it's not easily identified or national authorities are not really active within the area. Uh, the reason for this, of course, is because at its core, attribute tracking systems allow consumers to say that they've claimed some type of electricity production within a country or region. And because of that, we do have to have, of course, some type of verification that stakeholders on the ground and it, and it fits within the electricity market design of a specific country uh, within, the, within the region, of course. Um, you will often see that these voluntary tracking systems generally allow for greater choice to uh, individual consumers, greater choice to producers, um, greater choice to uh, the market more generally, so they're not as restricted. You'll notice this as well. Um, one other thing that you'll notice is that they often work in collaboration with national standards. So you'll you'll see that as national standards develop or state-led initiatives develop, voluntary tracking systems will kind of fill in the gaps in many different ways where that is legally possible to do so. Um, one important criteria of voluntary market developments here are that it's really based upon an information system. So we look at the uh, attribute tracking certificates, RECs, IREX, these types of mechanisms as an informational system. And this is different than state-initiated developments. You'll see in state-initiated developments generally, and especially when it comes to Eastern Asia and Southern Asia, the state-led initiative, that it's really a way for the governments to try and provide some level of support to renewable production devices. So not necessarily an information system from the perspective of consumers, more of a support system for the development of production of renewable electricity. This is not necessarily a bad thing, of course, but it can be complex and it can limit the choice to a consumer. You can imagine as a consumer yourselves, you might have a, uh, a long-term agreement, some of you may have PPAs, some of you might have interest in procuring attributes from a specific technology. But if that national development says, well, we don't allow uh, you to claim attributes from a specific production device, well, that can be very limiting in your choice, of course, as a consumer that does wish to pro procure renewables from a specific device that they don't say is an option. So this can be uh, rather limiting in some cases. But what is very clear, and in every country where there is a state-led initiative, there is the outspoken desire from the national governments to provide a voluntary market mechanism. And I'll describe a little bit about more about that in the next slide. And this is actually my last slide, so this is why I, really this was a quick overview of what's happening here, and I'm just going to describe a little bit more about these voluntary systems. So the voluntary systems primarily is the international REC standard. This is really the leading standard, uh, the leading uh, active standard within this region. Uh, there are um, uh, a lot of developments uh, related to the international REC standard, so please feel free to reach out uh, with us or the Secretariat or Natural Capital Partners if you have more questions about that. When it comes to the national development, I really want to focus on the developments uh, because lots of things are happening right now. I mean, within the last month, 
so much has happened in these specifically four different areas that you could have an hour-long webinar in each of these different markets. So it really is something that you want to reach out to stakeholders and talk about and see what developments are happening there. Just to run through some very quick developments, um, in China, the Chinese national market in June at the Clean Energy Ministerial 8, there was the announcement by the Chinese national authorities that they were going to be implementing a REC system, a voluntary REC system. In that time period, they have done this. They've launched a website. They've made a lot of information about the REC system available, but there's loads of outstanding questions. They've mentioned, of course, that there's uh, 45 million uh, RECs that have been issued, which grants the question, okay, if those have been issued, who is consuming them? And what are the rules for consumption? And what attributes are contained within those RECs? And many, many, many other questions are related to what's happening in the developments in China. There's one stakeholder in particular, that's Eco Energy, that is working very hard to try and uh, reach some clarity here. So uh, please reach out to Natural Capital Partners or others to uh, try and find out more about this. They are in contact with this stakeholder and many others. In the China Taiwanese National Rec System, there's many developments as well. Uh, for the last three years, the Taiwanese national government had a green purchase program. That green purchase program didn't really meet the criteria for what we would say is greenhouse gas accounting for scope two. It uh, didn't meet the criteria of CDP, et cetera. So they uh, did away with the green purchase program and they've now introduced the T-REC, the Taiwanese REC. Um, many questions still remain as well. What is, what is the uh, development of the registry? What is contained within a TREC? How is TREC issued? Who is able to consume it? All these other sorts of things, all these different questions that we've had. Uh, there has been a recent announcement by a, a U.S. nonprofit, Green E. Many of you will likely know Green E as well, that they are working with the Taiwanese national authorities to develop a Green E label for Taiwan. So we hope that many of these stakeholders will be able to provide some clarity here as well as to the national system, because there are many voluntary systems in both China and Taiwan. In Japan, there used to be an offset system, uh, and now this is becoming a JREC. The, the Japanese authorities are interested in introducing a national REC system in that country. It should be noted that REC International, myself, we're organizing a study trip together with the uh, Japanese CDP, um, as well as many national authorities in Japan, to have a webinar or to have a workshop in Tokyo on the development of the JREC. This is likely going to take place in the end of August, if anyone has questions related to this. Um, and then, of course, there's the Indian national system as well. The Indian national system has been around for a long time. I always say that the Indian national REC system is more of a REC by name than really in function, because the REC in India is not really anything that we would recognize in the U.S. or Europe as containing a specific attributes or having a very clear registry or allowing consumption on behalf of individual clients. So it makes it very difficult to procure attributes from India. There are, of course, again, voluntary systems in place, and many different stakeholders are working with the national governments in these regions. This brings me to my very last point, because I understand that I'm a bit past my time, um, is many, many stakeholders are working on these developments. And because these regions and markets are so large, the potential for change in these markets is also very, very large. And that's why I would really request that market players and stakeholders work together uh, so that there isn't a balkanization of ideas, so that there isn't a huge diversity in all these different ideas. If we're able to work together on similar principles, similar values, I think we are able to drive national governments into the right direction when it comes to the development of REC tracking systems in these countries. It is, of course, perfectly fine, and many national governments will choose for this direction as well, to have a completely voluntary market. And this is something that we support as well. It's beneficial for the consumer, and it's something that has to be discussed with all these international authorities. So there's lots of different developments happening here lots of different stakeholders involved um, and there's definitely ways today to reliably procure renewable electricity in Asia. I think Christian will talk about that a little bit more. So there's definitely options on the ground today but we also have the potential to really develop something for the future as well if we as stakeholders all work together to, uh, to promote uh, similar values and similar principles when it comes to the development of these systems. With that, I will uh, step away from the phone and give it to Christian because I know that I'm over time. 
And uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to questions at the end. Thank you very much for that quick overview, Jared. That offers some great insight into the interrelations of voluntary and state-initiated uh, developments, and it's clear that collaboration is key in order to harness these opportunities. Um, we've had some questions come in already, which we'll go through at the end, so please do keep them coming in. Uh, we've also had some queries for the white paper um, and we'll respond individually to you following the webinar. For now, I will hand over to Christian, who will dive a bit deeper into the options available to companies in specific countries in Asia. Thank you very much, Rosie, and, and thanks, Jared, for uh, putting the uh, putting out the scene there in such a such a good way. Um, I think as um, natural capital partners, we we see, of course, a lot of uh, businesses come to the market for all the various solutions um, that that are available. Um, you see here on on this slide all the. The different initiatives that that exist, um, both from a corporate and an NGO level, um, where people are really um, trying to get push uh, push from businesses to lead um, in in the sustainable development and and reducing emissions, increasing renewables, etc. Um, one of those, actually, we've just seen today in the news that um, RE100 now has its hundredth multinational that has signed up, um, and I understand that. That includes like 30 uh, global Fortune 500 companies, etc. We see that this market is is massive, um, and indeed many of our clients, of course, are interested through one of these associations, and often more than one of these associations. Um, a lot of our clients are looking for uh, different types of solutions to to what they're looking for. Um, it, and there is an increasing sort of sophistication and complexity that, that some clients are looking for. But if you go up to the right in this slide um, and you're going towards fully integrated PPAs or even on-site renewables, that is generally the, um, the area that people are in, um, in North America, for example. Whereas when we're talking about uh, locations in developing countries or more developing markets, um, and most of Southeast Asia, or South and East Asia, as, as Jared was saying, um, it would really be more on the, the left-hand side of the scale, uh, where we are talking primarily about um, the sort of attributes, the certificate um, uh, solutions that, that we need to be looking at. Uh, PPAs are not always um, available in these areas. Um, also, when we're looking at um, what businesses tell us that they are looking for, uh, we see that there are a lot of different quality specifications that people are looking for. Um, some things are more attractive than others to our clients. So, new uh, installations, for example, are more attractive than old ones. Small installations are more attractive than large installations. Um, even the the sort of the type of supplier is uh, potentially important to some of our clients, where suppliers that are a hundred percent renewable energy provider might be more interesting than people who are, for example, primarily nuclear energy generators or who might be doing other things in sectors that are not as um, uh, not as well seen um, or not as not a sustainable development uh, friendly potentially um, the other thing we're looking for very often in this market is something to be very local so we see a difference in um, in attractiveness for options that are more local so options that are available within the same province or state um, is is better than if it is only just in the same country and obviously that is better than if it is an international credit um, however some of those options, uh, even if they they might be less attractive to some, may still tick the box for other others. Um, Asia, of course, um, is uh, essential uh, for the global drive towards a low carbon future, and in fact, towards a, a high renewable energy future. Um, 
Asia has, um, at the moment, uh, it, well, it, it, it is a very industrialized area um, with very high emissions in, in, in some cases. Uh, there is very high growth and, and therefore lots of new energy generating capacity coming on stream. So any push towards more of that being renewable will help us to achieve that low carbon future um, better. So we see that this is um, this is essential for for that drive. Um, it is of course also essential in the sense of this is key to uh, many corporate purchases supply chains. Many of the products are are manufactured in Asia um, and then exported to say Europe or North America and therefore this is of great importance to a lot of our clients many of whom are global um, global companies with a global footprint however um, and, and Jared already said that as well there is of course a wide variety of energy markets and renewable energy schemes um, and therefore it becomes very difficult to, uh, to sort of find solutions uh, for the whole region because they are it is so diverse um, then let's go to the to the first country um, where, where I'd like to just say uh, a few things but I, I won't say too much uh, because Jared has already explained what is happening here um, I can just tell you that there are options available um, as, as national instruments um, there is a voluntary tracking system available and that has been quite a lively market quite a big market um, in fact I think the biggest IREC market uh, so to date there is now also the national green certificate scheme uh, that has started that uh, Jared referred to uh, but because this is still very recent and because there are still so many open questions I don't think um, we should be going into more detail there I think that will be the subject of our next or a future webinar um, when some of the questions that we have will be answered um, there are also some quality labels that are available for uh, for China um, by, by a variety of different NGOs uh, so that you can be even more secure about um, what you are buying. Then the second country that I'd like to briefly talk, of, talk about is India. Um, again options here are available for a national instrument. Um, a voluntary tracking system is available that works um, in addition to the national REC scheme um, and as Garrett, Garrett, Jared already said um, that national REC scheme is, is very much aimed at a compliance bias um, that, that is mostly the Indian utilities there and it is not very suitable for voluntary purposes um, so there is some scope there for voluntary systems and indeed a voluntary system is available um, however at the moment um, what we have seen from sort of the demands that our clients put on us um, that some of the the schemes and some of the availability there is is still very limited uh, so as a company we are also offering alternatives to uh, both those schemes the national and the voluntary tracking scheme um, which which provides an independently independently verified um, renewable energy generation solution but not necessarily as a voluntary tracking or a national tracking system it might not tick all the boxes for all the clients but it could mean that you get the technology that you want or it could mean you get the the location that you want so it is it is really just about where are your priorities and we will be able to find solutions that um, that work and that are credible then two countries that I've, I've grouped together here I've, I've grouped them together because they are both um, more developed um, or even OECD countries um, in both these places a national instrument is available um, however in neither of them at this moment is there a voluntary tracking system um, or a, a, an international voluntary tracking system um, there is a, a national tracking a national scheme available in uh, South Korea at the moment which is really aimed as uh, or being designed as a feed-in tariff um, and in Japan a national scheme as, as Jared was suggestion is is already 
under development um, but there also is a, a Japanese voluntary scheme um, that has operated for more than a decade um, so there are options available there we also hear because there are limitations to the national schemes, uh, we are offering an alternative through a verified renewable energy generation um, uh, as a company. Then the next uh, group of countries um, I'd like to talk about is the ASEAN region. Um, here options are available and they could be either national instruments in some of those countries uh, or there are alternative instruments uh, that we consider to be within an acceptable market boundary and there we use acceptable market boundary in the sense of uh, that what, what, what we consider to be the definition of the scope 2 uh, guidance for example. Um, so there is uh, a voluntary tracking system available or systems are available um, in this region. Um, there are no uh, national systems quite operational yet, um, but they are under development. Um, however, the, the, the project types that we can um, access here uh, are still very limited um, but there is an increasing number of projects available uh, so we are increasingly being able to deliver what our clients uh, are actually looking for um, but as I say it is still it is still limited at this moment uh, then there are of course some areas where um, there are no connections available to uh, to those countries where there are instruments and there we still have other other options available. So again, we have verified uh, renewable energy generation available as an alternative here. And then I think we, we already need to skip to the conclusions in order to finalize the, the, the webinar. Um, so in conclusion, in this region, businesses will be able to achieve their renewable energy goals um, across these Asian markets. Um, the the markets that are available do offer cost-effective reductions of scope 2 emissions and also contributions to the uh, to the NDCs if that is the, the nationally determined contributions uh, of the countries if that is of interest to the company of course um, primarily uh, this is all through the an energy attribute tracking system of course uh, PPAs are very very difficult to do in this region not impossible but they are difficult um, we seeing we are seeing at the moment that there is a continuing expansion of the uh, available options um, new national systems being developed new projects coming online etc um, and we are working hard to further expand these options uh, working with our various supply partners um, and then finally, I think that combinations of uh, national and voluntary uh, attribute certificate schemes um, as well as verified generation um, alternatives are available uh, that together can help you um, find these solutions for your whole portfolio. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Uh, we've had quite a few questions come in, so I'm just going to choose a couple of them for the panelists to answer in the short time we have. And any outstanding questions we will respond to directly following the webinar. Um, so firstly, for Jared, and if you could kindly keep responses fairly short, um, can you describe a bit more about the implementation of voluntary systems in Asia and how they interact with the developing national systems? Uh, sure. I think there's a, a lot of developments that are going to be happening here within the next few months and definitely within the next year. You'll notice, for example, in Taiwan that uh, because of that green purchase program, it was only able to purchase, you were only able to voluntarily procure through the IREC standard from hydro technologies. Uh, now that the TREC, the Taiwanese REC system, is coming in, it's uh, interesting to see what the uh, national authorities are going to be uh, what the national authorities are going to be saying here about other voluntary tracking systems and it's something that we are going to be discussing with national authorities and other stakeholders during a uh, study trip in Taiwan in September. Uh, so more should be known about this relatively soon when it comes to voluntary tracking systems but also this uh, is something that should be discussed with stakeholders more widely as well. Thank you, Jared. Um, one for Christian. Why do you offer an alternative to the energy attribute tracking systems? 
Uh, thanks for that question. Um, yeah, we, we have seen, um, and, and the, the clearest example has been India, um, where the national system is, um, is, is, is effectively prohibiting or makes it very difficult for us to use um, any technologies that are covered by the national system for voluntary purposes. Um, and that means that the, the voluntary tracking schemes uh, available at the moment are limited to large hydro. And many of our clients have told us that they will not accept large hydro as, um, as a tracking um, instrument for them, for their purposes. And so we have to be able to offer alternatives there. Um, and we have been able to do that through, um, through ver independently verified uh, generation um, that, uh, where we know that there's no further double counting. All right, thank you very much uh, to both of our speakers for their presentations and thank you all of you once again for attending and asking questions as well. Uh, with that, I'm to end the webinar. The webinar recording will be available on our website and will be sent out to everyone shortly, so please feel free to share it with your colleagues and contacts. If you would like to receive the white paper with more details on what we have discussed today, or indeed if you are interested in learning more about the options available to your business for sourcing renewable in energy in Asia, uh, then please email me, um, Christian or Jared, um, addresses on the screen now. Thank you very much.